Eight everyday items that could be destroying your sperm. To put it simply, sperm count is going down, my friends, and I'm here to discuss possible reasons this might be happening. Does eating walnuts affect it? How about wearing tidy whities Drinking soda does what to one's nether regions? And does a certain type of workout have negative effects on your quality of, um, output? We'll be discussing that, plus other everyday things that you didn't realize are destroying your swimmers. All right, let's dive right in. In fact, did you know that in a recent study, experts found that the average sperm count over the past 38 years Years has declined by 59%. So here are eight possible sperm damaging everyday habits that we need to talk about. Number one possible sperm destroyer, lack of sleep. So if you have a habit of staying up late, playing video games, or binging Netflix or whatever, remember this one detail. No sleep equals no bueno for your sperm. In fact, people who get less than six hours of sleep per night were 31% less likely to get their partners pregnant as compared to those who slept seven to eight hours per night. Why is that you may ask? Well, without getting too technical, lack of sleep equals lower testosterone in the body, which is essential for sperm production. But then again, don't go too crazy on the snooze button either. Other studies found that folks who slept longer than like nine hours a night often demonstrated lower fertility levels as well. So like the Goldilocks and Three Bears story, to make sure your porridge is just right, eight hours is truly the sweet spot to keep things healthy. Number two, sperm damager. Sperm damager. Why does that sound like a horrible superhero name? Anyway, the number two game changer in, well, that department, processed meat. Evidently, eating processed meats like bacon, hot dogs, salami, and so forth may decrease the reproductive hormones that help with the formation of healthier sperm. It all goes back to testosterone again. And that being said, if you want to save your swimmers, so to speak, you may want to order up some fish. That's right, according to a study out of Harvard, diet and semen quality were closely related. Of 155 men, they found that those who ate mostly fish or consumed a diet that was higher in omega-3 rich fish, like salmon or tuna, they had higher sperm counts than those who ate less fish. And get this, there may be another helpful food as well. A small study in 2012 found that walnuts may be the key to improving sperm vitality as well. They studied 117 men ages 21 to 35 who ate 18 walnuts daily for 12 weeks. They found that their sperm was better than those who did not eat the walnuts at all. Numero three, hot tubs and saunas. You may have seen Hot Tub Time Machine where those four friends get a glimpse of their future via the magical jacuzzi. Well, my friends, when it comes to hot tubs and your um, sperm vitality, you're going to be wishing you had a time machine to go back. You're going to be wishing you had a time machine to go back to get those precious minutes and swimmers. Yes, here's the deal. Testicles, AKA the area where your sperm are produced. Well, well, they're outside of the body for a reason. You see, ideally, sperm production occurs at 93.2 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about 5.4 degrees below normal body temperature of 98.6. In a small study that followed men and a Scandinavian-style sauna program, researchers found that people who participated in the study were found to have lower sperm counts and reduced sperm motility after the prescribed sauna use. However, they did find that the effects were reversed when their studied men avoided sauna use for three months. Another sperm damaging habit, drinking soda. Mountain Dew making you infertile? I am sure you've heard that rumor before, but in a human reproduction study, they found that folks that drank more than one sugary soda a day had lower sperm motility as compared to those who rarely guzzled soda. Super interesting data for sure, but let's think about it on a bigger picture here. Eating or drinking too much sugar in general can lead to insulin resistance, which can lead to inflammation in the body, which then in turn can hinder how your sperm moves. Also, too much fat in the body prompts your body to make less testosterone and higher amounts of estrogen, which could be a no-go for your sperm as well. So in general, whether it's actually the soda or just an unhealthy lifestyle or higher amounts of sugar or fat in one's body, they all can greatly affect your swimmers. Keep that in mind. This also goes for alcohol as well. An occasional beer or glass of wine seems to be fine, but research also linked heavier drinking to lower testosterone levels, lower sperm counts, and smaller numbers of healthy sperm. Number five, sperm destroyer, stress. The dang stuff just is bad for the body in general and can lead to a number of life-threatening issues. But here's how it can affect one's little reproductive cells specifically. A study out of Columbia University found that people with higher levels of stress had worse sperm quality than those who said they were less stressed. You see, stress in the body throws your hormones out of whack, which we know can create inflammation in the body among other
other things, which in turn can be detrimental to your little friends. Say hello to my little friend. Number six, electronics. Well, maybe not all electronics, but there are reports out there that say keeping your smartphone in your pocket or say your laptop on your lap for extended periods of time could not only hinder the way the sperm moves about the cabin, so to speak, but also decreases the number that are swimming around. Whether it's some unforeseen radiation from the phones or heat being emitted from electronics near your groin area hampering your production of sperm, more studies would be needed to specify the exact causation, but it may be just something to keep in mind. You may just want to be cautious about where you keep your laptop or your phone. Number seven, cycling. All right, sorry to report, but our next sperm destroyer may not sit well with cycling enthusiasts. In fact, it could be the sitting that's causing the issue in the first place. Oh my God. But cyclists beware, because a study of Spanish triathletes that compared cyclists to non-cycling athletes found not so great news for those who like to pedal around town. The study suggested that regular cycling equated to poor sperm quality and account for those particular athletes. Number eight, tidy whities. So I'll try to keep this brief and no fun intended. Hey, all jokes aside, there's some belief out there that certain underwear options could be leading to lower counts as well. This begs the question, to boxer or not to boxer? Something to consider. When the testicles are held or positioned more tightly against the body as they would be if one is wearing briefs, the scrotal temperatures could possibly elevate and damage sperm. The same applies for those who frequently cross their legs. The added friction and possible rise in temperature could be doing a number on one sperm. What exactly is considered a low sperm count, or as they call in the medical field, oligospermia? You may be surprised to learn that sperm has a pretty intense journey before its grand finale, and it takes about two and a half months to prep all the sperm expelled in an average ejaculation. A male can produce around 150 million sperm a day. That means you are producing a few thousand sperm every couple of seconds. So a low count would be fewer than 39 million sperm per ejaculation. And that might sound like a lot, but you also have to think in terms of quality, so to speak. They may have deformities like two heads, small heads, or do things like swim in circles, or be damaged to the point where they can't even swim and do the business as usual. Actually, some experts describe only more than half the sperm in an average semen ejaculation can swim, and higher percentages than that are not ideally shaped for swimming. All right, that's been a quick breakdown with me, Dr. Wagner. Do you have other medical questions about fertility, sperm, or anything on this topic of conversation, let me know in the comments. Also, do you have another medical topic like this that can be a little embarrassing that you want me to break down further and explain? Let me know that too in the comments. Please make sure you subscribe and turn your bell notifications on. When you do that and you hit that like button, you let YouTube know that you'd like to see more videos like this one. Thank you so much for watching and stay healthy, my friends.